Okay, Jake, how are you feeling this morning? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, good. I think we are we're live actually, so oh, let's awesome. let's get going. <laughs> All right. Hi everyone, I'm Jake. I'm the head barista here at the barn. Um, I'm gonna take you guys through a couple of different ways of brewing an AeroPress. The first way is gonna be like the standard recipe that we use here. And the second one is gonna be Ralph's uh, it, what, you won the Ger German Aeropress competition yeah, was many years ago. Many I think years ago. Well, it's going to be Ralph's secret, secret recipe. So I can look forward to that. Um, all right. So the first way we're going to uh, make it is, um, I guess you'd call it the standard way as opposed to inverted. Um, first of all, we're going to take a filter like that, pop it in. And we're just gonna pre, oh, we're gonna connect it to this bit. It's important to um, look in there and make sure that your filter hasn't become like dislodged or like come up in any way. So it's nice and securely locked in there. Uh, we're just gonna put in about, I don't know, 50 grams of water, I would say. Just enough to um, soak through the paper, just the same as the V60. We wanna wash out any paper particles that might be sitting there to get rid of that kind of papery flavor. No one wants that. Um, and it's also going to preheat this jug a little bit for us. All right, that's just about gone through there. All right, so we're going to use two different coffees as well. Um, for this method, I'm going to use this coffee here, Kokamu. It's a really beautiful um, filter rose. It's a wash coffee from Rwanda. Um, it's got some really nice berry, kind of raspberry, even blueberry notes. Um, it's also very floral, nice black tea flavors as well. Classic kind of high quality Rwandan flavors. Uh, all right, so for this method, we're gonna use 16 grams of coffee. Um, it's on a, I would say a medium grind. It's a little bit finer than what I would use for a V60. Um, I've got some pre-dosed coffee here. That's 16 grams of beans and the 16 grams of ground. And we're going to use 230 grams of water. It's going to be the same temperature as what we used for the uh, V60 yesterday, so about 95 degrees. But if you're at home and you don't have a thermometer, I would say, again, just off boiling. So boil the kettle let it sit for 30 seconds and then pour and that should be pretty much the right temperature. Um, so what we're gonna do, pour the coffee in, start the timer, pour straight away 230 grams of water in, so the whole amount of water. Then we're gonna stir three times and a quarter turn back just to stop it swirling. We're gonna pop the lid on and it's very important when you do this, you wanna roll it on and pull it up a tiny bit. I'm going to show you again when I make the brew. What that's going to do is create a vacuum in here so that the, the liquid isn't dripping, dripping through. That's very important. Um, after that, we're going to wait. First things first, very important. Take it off the scales because you don't want to get to the end of the brew and start pressing on the scales because you're going to break them. So take it off the scales, wait till 55 seconds, remove the lid, and then at one minute, take your stirrer, three more stirs and a quarter stir back. Then at one minute, you're gonna put the lid back on and one minute of five, you're gonna press and it's gonna take 20 seconds. So you'll finish at one minute 25. All right. So if you didn't catch all that, I'm gonna do it again. And just like yesterday, we're gonna write the, uh, the recipes in the comments. Ooh. So I'm gonna pop my coffee in. Go 16 grams. Just gonna settle it a little bit. Tear my scales. All right, I'm gonna start my timer. And you want to pour quickly. So I'm really just like throwing that water in as quickly as possible. 230 grams. Three stirs. A little stir back, and roll this on, and lift it up a little bit. And now that liquid's gonna stay because I've created a vacuum. Take that off the scales, we can move that out of the way. We're just gonna wait a little bit. So I really like AeroPress um, because it's an immersion method. You basically kind of eliminate 
channeling, I guess, in a way, because the water is, the coffee's sitting in the water the entire time. It's not relying on the water flowing constantly through the coffee. This theoretically gives you a much more even extraction. I also think you get a little bit more body, perhaps, from an AeroPress. So I'm taking that lid off. One minute, stir three more times. One minute, oh five. Let's start our press. I'm really not pressing hard here, but I think it's a good idea to get a good grip on both the AeroPress and whatever you're um, pressing into. Just because you don't want to run the risk of um, knocking everything over and making a huge mess. Ha did that ever happen to you? Definitely. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> not too often anymore, luckily. Alright, so that's done. You want to wait till you hear that hissing sound. That'll let you know that all the liquid's gone through. Just pop that in there. Great. All done. Super easy. I would say that's one of the many advantages of AeroPress. It's really, um, I love that it's very easy to make. Um, and the result is, um, is, is really, really good. Why are you only pouring a little bit into the cup? I want it to cool down. It's, it's very hot and I want it to cool down a little bit so I can actually taste the flavor. If it's too hot, it's just burning my mouth and I can't taste anything. Yeah. Couple of questions. Why are you using a glass decanter for this? Why are you choosing the metal pitcher? Um, if, if you've got a solid glass thing, is is perfectly fine to use. But you don't want to use anything that's a thin glass because you are pressing down on it, remember. So you could potentially break it and that would be not fun at all. Mm. So metal, nice and safe. I'm not going to break this jug when I'm pressing down. Yeah. So that's the, that's the main reason, I would say. Yeah, the concept is based on the French press, but what are the differences between AeroPress and French press? Um, I would say the biggest difference, apart from... Well, first of all, you've got this kind of plunger, like vacuum type situation. The second thing is you're pushing it through a paper filter. Um, that's going to get almost all of the, like the, the, at least all of the larger coffee particles out of the brew. Unlike the, the French press where you're still going to get some, some small coffee particles floating, floating in there. Yeah. So you get a little bit more of a cleaner mm. cup, I would say. But is it as clean as the V60 that we had yesterday? Um, I would say perhaps not, um, but it does, I mean, it, there's, there's, there's positives and negatives. I would say you get a little bit more body with an AeroPress, but you perhaps get a cleaner cup from a V60. Yeah. Um, and this is also like super easy, as you just saw. Yeah. It's also um, obviously made of plastic, so if you're traveling, it's perfect. You can put it in your backpack, you don't have to worry about it breaking. Yeah. And you can make it anywhere. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you chose a Rwandan because it has this beautiful mouthfeel and the AeroPress with the bypassing of some of the fines and the oils is just giving... Actually, can I have a cup? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'll give you this one. Thank you. Let's see how I manage. Oh, oh, that's my water. Cool. There you go. Perfect. Maybe some flavor notes on that would be great if you can use it a little bit. I would say raspberry definitely is a strong one for me. A little bit of vanilla sweetness and definitely black tea florals. Wow. Super complex. Wow. It's really nice coffee. Yeah. The guys from Uno Cafe in Japan keep asking about sour taste. I'm not entirely sure what that question meant, but do I'm you get more soury, more acidity, I guess, I in the AeroPress? I would say, as opposed to a V60, I would say no. I would say you maybe get a little bit more sweetness, even from a v from a from an AeroPress than you would from a V60. Mm. But that again is dependent a lot on your method and your what kind of extraction you get. If you get a lower extraction, you're going to get a lot more acidity. If yeah. you get a higher extraction, you might get a little bit lower acidity, but you'll get a little yeah. bit more sweetness. Yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm getting a lot of lemon notes in the finish. Mm. It's. So so balanced, really cool. It's super delicate. Mm. <coughs> wow. Very tea-like. Yeah. Tea -like. yeah. Let's do another method, right? All right, cool. 
So this time, Ralph's recipe, we're going to do an inverted method, which is something a little bit different. I should point out now, actually, you can use the same recipe I just did, but you can, you can make it as inverted as well. It also works that way. Um, so, start off. And you want to just get the plunger just in. So it's, it's about, I would say, a centimeter inside, upside down. And it's going to sit like this. Oh, okay. That gives it a lot more space, right? A lot, well, yeah. It, it's about the same, it's the same amount of space. You couldn't really fit, I would say, 230 grams of water would be the limit to what you could fit in there. Yeah. So again, we're going to take a filter, pop it in here. All right. But this time, I'm just going to soak the filter a little bit like this. Beautiful. Why are you doing it? Again, just to wash out the paper, any fine paper particles that are sitting on top. Yeah. We could also preheat here, but it's not necessary. Mm. It's up, up, up to you. Up, yeah. Plastic, yeah. plastic is, is not going to take so much of the heat from the liquid yeah. as opposed to ceramic, so it's, it's probably fine not to. Yeah. You could also preheat the jug as well, it's up to you. Personally, I like not to do that because I actually want the liquid to cool down when it hits the jug so I can drink it sooner. It depends on when you want to drink, really. Yeah. All right, so that's nice and preheated. Can you say a little bit about metal filters? That question popped up. Is there a different taste or extraction on metal? I haven't experimented a lot with them, but obviously you're not going to filter as much out with a metal filter as you are with a paper filter. The holes are mu the pores are much smaller in a paper filter than they are in a metal filter. So I would say you would probably get a cleaner cup with a paper filter. You can also put two filters in if you want to get like extra clean cup but again i think it's not really necessary it's a kind of more of a matter of personal preference what coffee do we have here all right so this is super special this is a lorena which is a low calf varietal of coffee this is from de terra in brazil i understand yeah so we've been working with these guys i guess for a little bit more than a year now three three years Whoa. Sorry, time flies. <laughs> um, and we actually have a small plot there now of Lorena that we're, that we're kind of doing some, some experimental, more experimental lots. We're working on some honeys as well. Yeah. I'm guessing this is not... No, it's a Aromosa. The Lorena is really very little this year. They had so little Lorena. Yeah. You know, this is such a weak plant and there was not much they could share weak but delicious so it naturally has about 80 percent less caffeine than normal arabica um so i'm just popping the coffee in here I'm any tips to avoid it. the spilling on the well actually aeropress comes with a um with a funnel that you can use to mm. do that i normally wouldn't use a, a a wide glass like i'm using now that's why i'm making such a meal of this okay uh, but it's all right it's pretty much all in there so this time I'm using 15 grams of coffee mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do a small bloom as well. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour, I'm going to tear the scales first. I'm going to pour um, 40 grams of, of water in uh, slowly. I'm going to make sure I soak all the coffee and I'm going to let that sit until 30 seconds. Then I'm going to top up to 230 grams and I'm going to put the lid on and then I'm going to let that sit until one minute 30. Then I'm going to flip and press slowly for 30 seconds and I'll finish at two minutes. The grind setting maybe? This is, good point, this is actually quite a bit finer with, with, this, with this method. Mm. Um, we also, we have a lower dose and we're not doing any agitation so mm. that's why. Also with um, Lorena in general as a varietal of coffee, I find I have to grind a little bit finer. I'm not sure if it's to do with the lower caffeine content but to get a what, what I found with, to be a normal extraction for Lorena is often quite a bit lower than what I would consider a good extraction for, for other varietals of coffee. Yeah. Like often my ideal recipe is only like 17.5% extraction as opposed to 20, 21%. Yeah, so I guess it's possibly right to say like, find out what your coffee is all about and build a relationship with them. 
Absolutely. Every coffee is different. It's a natural product. Um, and you can't even say if a, Bra a Brazilian coffee or even a, a certain varietal is going to behave a certain way. You, you might have an idea, but you, you need to teach, uh, treat every, every coffee individually. Yeah. 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 What, what a temperature, quickly. Exactly the same. So 95 degrees. Um, if you're at home, again, boil the kettle, 30 seconds, and then pour, and that will be the right temperature. All right, so I'm going to start this timer on. I'm going to slowly pour 40 grams of water in here. So Let's like see. a blooming almost? As really. Exactly, exactly like a bloom. And I'm just going to wait. And basically what, what's happening now is the coffee's slowly expanding. And then I'm going to top up. the rest of the water I'm not pouring super fast it's quite quite different my pour with this brew making small circular motions and I'm just gently bringing it up to my target of 230 grams yeah I think water temperature and grind setting are in very close relation so you can go lower in water temperature but then your grind setting is probably a little bit different, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. I see a lot of people experimenting with different um, different water temperatures. I personally think I think the general consensus is close to boiling, um, and that's to do with the way different acids and different parts of the the coffee that give us the flavor dissolve at different temperatures. And it, it, generally speaking, pretty close to boiling is going to be like the ideal range in terms of the speed of, of what things are dissolving at. Sure. All right. All right. So here we go. Pop that on top. Hold this carefully in the middle. You really want to be careful doing that. I can't stress that enough because if you're not, then things can fall apart and you're <laughs> going to burn yourself and also make a huge mess in your kitchen. And, and have a tight grip around the pitcher down there, right? Have a tight pitcher. At, at, <laughs> have a tight grip around the pitcher and also around the center of the aeropress because you really don't want to yeah i really can't stress that enough you really don't want it to fall apart while you're doing that just trying to catch the hiss there yeah cool so here we go i'm out of cups let's take a cupping ball let's Acme. Are you from New Zealand as well? Me, yes. I'm definitely from New Zealand. <laughs> In case you guys hadn't noticed that I'm <laughs> from my accent. So you brought the cups. Yeah, exactly. They're from Wellington, actually, where I'm from. So. Okay, I guess this is mine. Thank yes, you. that is yours. So we're just going to pour us, again, pouring a small amount in. Give it a wee swirl. Let it cool down. Yum. It's super nice. I think I could have even gone a little bit finer with that grind. Mm. To give you an idea of, of, of the grind size for this method, I would say it's very similar to what you'd use for a stove top. Um, so on the EK, I've gone, so I did it on five, about three full numbers finer than I would for the first method. Um, on a Comandante, for example, I would do the first method about 18 clicks from the burst touching and this method I would hazard a guess at about 13 clicks so yeah. quite a bit finer yeah um, but again it's something you're gonna have to experiment yeah. experiment with a little bit we got a question can the coffee grounds get stuck at the the bottom when you're flipping it I guess that's why some people stir before they flip Right. Did you I ever guess, have that? I guess theoretically they could, but because, I mean, they're sitting, I don't think that would make much of a difference in the extraction mm. because the way immersion works is that the, the grounds are sitting in the liquid the entire time. So it's the, it's still extracted. You could stir. Um, I think we mostly just wanted to show a method with stirring and a method without stirring. Yeah. I would say all of these recipes can any recipe that you can find on the internet can be tweaked and customized. Yeah. 
Um, just stirring gives you probably more extraction and then again it's your grind setting. It will definitely, any agitation will probably lift the extraction a little bit. You don't want to over agitate. But um, I would say of these two, I would, I can't, what I do at home is a combination. So I do the first method, but I do it as inverted. Yeah. Um, and I find that works really well. And yeah. I really can't stress you guys, if you try it at home, you'll see it's super easy. Like, yeah. You maybe try it one or two times, and then you'll be able to do it perfectly. Yeah. So um, a, a little bit. It involves a little bit less technique, maybe, than making a, a really good V sixty. Mm -hmm. Um. So another reason why it's super yeah. nice. What is the blooming doing to the whole thing? Right. What do you get from the blooming? Um. Well, I mean, in a in an aero press, it's hard to say. I think it definitely does change the flavor a little bit. And. A, for example blooming in a v60 it's really about allowing the coffee to soak up a little bit of water and expand before you start hitting it with a high volume of water and that theoretically I guess creates a slightly more even extraction I guess that could be true as well with an immersion brew it yeah. definitely does affect the flavor a little bit so yeah now the aeropress is so versatile and we got a question here that um, about can you do an espresso or a mocha with it? Um, well, if you ask the guy that made it, that is, <laughs> he will tell you that that is what it is supposed to be used for. Actually, I watched a video. What's the guy's name? Adam. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> um, I watched a video of him doing his his aeropress method, and I was he uses a lot of coffee and not a lot of water, and he basically makes. I guess something that's essentially espresso strength. So when we're talking about strength, usually for a filter coffee, usually it's around 1.3 or 1 point, between 1.3 and maybe 1.5% extraction. Mm -hmm. uh, not extraction, 1.5% strength. Mm -hmm. um, but where, with an espresso coffee, it's more like eight to 10%. Mm -hmm. So it's much, much stronger, much more concentrated. It's obvious if you taste an espresso compared to tasting a filter coffee. So basically he makes like more close, something closer to an espresso strength and then he dilutes it with water. Um, so that means he can make something that, you know, is only maybe 100 mils or 150 mils of liquid and then he can get four cups of coffee out of it and by then diluting it with water. The bypassing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, just to repeat on the grind setting, we get a couple of questions here on what's the ideal grind setting. Can you just repeat what you said? So again, I would say it's a medium grind. Um, uh, with a Comandante, for example, I'm using that. Yeah. <laughs> Giving Comandante a lot of props here. It's a fantastic <laughs> product. Um, I would say from, from uh, the burst touching, about... 18 clicks 17 to 19 clicks from the burst touching um, so yeah it's, it's something in the middle a little bit finer than v60 but not as fine as like a, a violetti or an espresso yeah for the second method you'll need to go a bit finer than that though yeah we have questions on extraction but i think we do a whole work, uh, workshop on that right yeah i mean i can answer quickly something but i think we'll probably do a, another thing Tomorrow we're going to look at doing uh, French press and also like comparing that to how we cup. Um, so maybe we'll talk about extraction a little bit in that. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to say both of these coffees available on our web shop. Um, I think we're still doing free shipping in Germany. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we're still doing free shipping throughout Germany. Um, but also... we're shipping worldwide so yeah. anyone anywhere in the world can order our coffee um, if you want to try either of these at home. Yeah, fantastic. So tomorrow, what are we talking about tomorrow? We're going to do French press, but um, I'm going to show you a way of making French press that's like similar to how we would um, do a cupping bowl, which is um, how, we, how we taste coffee here. And most, most roasteries taste coffee to check for quality. Um, so it's also a, an immersion brew method, but something slightly different and something that most people have already at their home. Great. Fantastic. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Cool. Very early, same time? Yeah, same time. Sure. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. All right. Ciao, guys.